Hi everyone, uh, it's Bill back for another video. I know it's been a while. Um, March has been a tough month for me. Um, I have not been able to get rid of this cold, sore throat. I lost my voice for a few, actually almost over a week. It's just kind of coming back now. And I haven't loaded a new video in quite a while. It's been about two and a half weeks, I think. And I was on a I was on a good streak. I was I was pretty much putting up a video every four days since the beginning of the year, but uh, this sickness sort of caught me off guard, but I'm back. At least I'm back today. My throat is feeling a little bit better. And mostly I don't have to lecture this week. I'm a full-time college professor. I know a lot of you know that. So I've been saving my voice for class, but uh, the students have a week off. So I figured I could, uh, I could use my voice to make a video. And really because I have some work to do and I thought I would bring you along. But I'm just walking through the spring garden today. The bulbs are starting to come up. It's really beautiful outdoors and I'm gonna do my, uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing video today, technically an unbagging video. I'm gonna do that outdoors. Um, that's where I love to do these things. But I thought I would start out by showing you my first plant purchase of the season. I'm really excited about this. Um, I recently bought some new garden, vintage garden architecture for the yard, and I'm going to put it together in a few weeks and film it. Um, and one of the pieces I bought is this old iron French planter. And uh, I went to the store today and picked up some of the earliest flowering uh, flowers there are. Um, the hellebores, and I got five of them. They look pretty good. They need some water. Um, they weren't exactly taken care of, but they're gorgeous. So I thought I'd just show you them real quick. So I'm gonna walk on over to where they are, turn the camera around, and I'll give you a great look at them and the beautiful planter that I've put them in temporarily. Okay, here they are from a distance. They're such a pretty flower and they're an investment. These are on the pricier side when it comes to perennial flowers. Um, I'm not sure you're getting the best look right now because of the sun, but aren't they so, so pretty? And I got five of them. I've never owned five of these in my life because I, as I said, they are, they are a more expensive flower. And look at that antique planter. Isn't that gorgeous? I love all the patina on it. And while I'm here, I'm gonna show you um, if you saw the video I did at, uh, at an antique store called Antique Treasures in Pennsylvania, um, one of the things I highlighted at that store were the beautiful gardens that they had. And I recently um, uh, talked to the owner and she allowed me to buy this from her display. Um, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole um, aluminum or yeah, aluminum, I guess. I don't know, what do they make those out of? Well, anyway, it's a, an old coal bucket. Uh, with some prickly pear cactus and some hens and chicks in it. Isn't that beautiful? So as you can see, I'm getting really excited for the garden. The, as you can see, the flowers have started to wake up in the raised beds where all the veggies are gonna go this, this summer. But let me turn my attention to a task at hand because it needs to get done today. So I'm going to bring you over to the place where I'm going to do the unbagging and show you the setup others. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. Um, all I have uh, in terms of equipment are my scissors, my ice water, I have a beautiful planter that I put the price tags in, and a garbage bag, a garbage pail next to me so that I can throw out the plastic bags. Technically recycle the plastic bags. So let me get set up and I will start the process. Okay, just like that, I am back. So I've done one video like this before. Um, I explained in that video that I handle my purchases for resale and quite frankly, for the things I wanna keep for my collection. I handle them in different ways depending on what they are and where I got them. For the things I buy at antique stores and larger places where I typically pay a little bit more for things, um, I generally unbox those right when I get home. Um, typically I buy them because they're either going into my collection or a sale that week or the following week. For the things I buy at thrift stores and flea markets, of which I go to frequently around here, um, I do two different things. The first thing I do for the larger items is I come home, I write the discounted price because I typically only buy things that are 25, 50 or 75% off at thrift stores. Um, I write the discounted price on the price tag and I immediately put it um, into the inventory and onto the shelves or 
you know, into the ephemera area, depending on what it is. However, I also spend a lot of time at thrift stores going through the plastic bags that are hanging up. Uh, I'm really fortunate in this area that a lot of the thrift stores put their small things in plastic bags. And I notice that a lot of people don't look through them, but I do. I spend some time looking through them and once in a while I find a treasure, but often I find some solid things. And today I think I have a box full of solid things and maybe one or two treasures. Um, so what I do with the bags is a little bit different because there, are, there typically are so many of them. Doing them every time I come home just takes a lot of time. So usually what I do is I take all the bags, you know, an example would be these little salt and pepper shakers. I take all these bags and I put them in a box and then once or twice a month, but not, I haven't done it for two months this time, once or twice a month I go through and I take everything out of the bags. Uh, and one of the reasons I like to keep them in the bags is because I want to know how much I spent on things. Uh, every single one of these um, items comes along with a price tag on it. And again, because I usually only buy things that are um, discounted, I need to indicate what the discounted price is. So originally this bag was $4. It was 50% off when I bought it. So I spent $2 on it. So what I do is I cut all these tags off and I put them into a vessel. Today I'm just gonna use my beautiful uh, Majelica planter because it was handy and I have a lot of tags today. Um, and then I will show you the items. Typically I just put them in a box. I'll show you what they are. And at the end, I'll do some math because the way that I run my business, a lot of people do it differently, but the way I run my business is I cost average. So, you know, if I spend a dollar on each one of these things, but $2 on something else, at the end of the day, I'm gonna average out the costs and say each item cost me a certain amount of money. I also subtract those things that I'm keeping in my collection um, because I wanna get those things for free. So um, I'll show you the math at the end, but let's just start with the process because there's a mighty lot of bags today. So it's gonna probably be a long video. So I'll try to keep it nice and um, nice and quick. So I cut it off, I put the price tag in there for processing later. And this is a really good example of things that typically I haven't been purchasing because I do have a lot left over from my grandmother's antique store. Um, but um, now that I have a physical location, uh, I tend to buy them more. And it's sort of the older serving pieces and utensils. Um, like this, this guy here, uh, need to exactly see, I'm sure a lot of you know what it is. Is it for picking up olives or something? I don't know, but I thought it was really cool. And I know these are the sorts of things that people like to buy when they come into the store. So that's the first thing I got. And I also got just a little gravy ladle um, because it's really nice. And one of the things I've been trying to teach myself um, are the different types of silver. And when I see things that have markings in, um, in the thrift stores, I typically pick them up just to learn about them. And then, you know, sell it for a dollar. Um, but I, I like to learn about them. So um, I also pick up things that are nostalgic for me because sometimes they're nostalgic for other people as well. And um, this is an example of that. Uh, this entire set of which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, cost me $3. So they were 50 cents a piece. And they are these um, little uh, coasters that my grandmother had in her home. They're sort of rattan with uh, little butterflies or moths um, on the inside. And the entire set of six is here. And I know if they're nostalgic for me, they must be uh, something that someone else remembers from when they were young, or maybe something that you owned you know, yourself at one point. So those are really fun to see because I haven't seen those in a long time. I do know, because my grandmother had them, that they did come with a carrier, but um, I did not find the carrier. I did look around other parts of the thrift store this day to see if I could find it, but I couldn't find it. So that was a fun find just because it's something I remember. Um, I also buy things for my own collections and I've had this candle before, this Spirit of 76 candle. Uh, it's, it sort of harkens to uh, 4th of July, and I sold mine last year, and I wish I didn't because I just put a 4th of July, a year-round 4th of July uh, uh, display together in my home. So when I saw this one, and it has the original little flag that came with it, I picked it up. And this is actually going to be for me um, to put into my onto the shelf where I have some 4th of July items. Now, I seem to remember, I sort of lucked out this time around with the kitsch. Um, someone must have gotten rid of a collection. You might remember if you saw my last video where I did something like this. Um, someone had uh, 
donated an entire salt and pepper collection. Well, I don't have too many salt and peppers this time, but I have a ton of little Japan figurines, like this little lamb, similar to one that I recently brought to a sale. So that was fun to find. And then this is probably a more contemporary lamb. So this may go to the store or it may go into a mystery box at some point, but it came along with the vintage one. So I thought I would uh, grab the set. Now the kitsch at this particular, on this particular day was quite good. And um, sometimes I will buy a bag just for one thing that's in it. And then I redonate uh, what was in it. But this bag had quite a few things and I'm not sure of the condition of all of them, but it had this little plastic deer, which is super cute and it looks to be in really good condition. It had this really fun gobel bunny and uh, it's right around Easter time. I don't know when you're watching this, but it's right around Easter time, 2024. So it's fun to find this, although this will stay with me because he's cute. And then I found this little pair and I think they're Joseph's, uh, this little pair of mice. These were all in one bag for $2, for $2. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think we all live in different areas of the country. I see so many videos with people, um, you know, saying that thrift stores aren't what they used to be. Well, I'm pretty lucky. Uh, I mean, I, I don't go to Goodwills. Um, there aren't many around me, but uh, I do have quite a lot of other thrift stores and I typically, I typically do pretty well. Um, and the kitsch continues today. So I found this uh, little set of Lefton. This was a dollar. Uh, two Lefton kitties in really good condition. Now they're the same kitty. Um, so someone might not want both, but um, they will be fun to find homes for. And they're in really good condition. There are no condition issues with them. Okay, so sometimes I buy things that fall on the floor. I think it's okay. Uh, sometimes I buy things because of the way they look, not that I actually think they're vintage. Um, and these were 50 cents a piece, so I picked them up. They are these really beautiful, oh, and they are actually marked made in, handmade in Germany on the bottom. These beautiful glitter deer. Now these were probably sold more recently in a store, but this one is like a beautiful bronze glitter. And it's actually not, oh, it is glitter that'll come off on your hands. Ugh. I'm not a big fan of glitter, but it's really beautiful and it's big. Um, so that's the dough. And then there is a buck. And I remember looking at this before I bought it just to make sure that the antlers were in good condition and they are. Um, so that's a really fun set uh, to get. And I'm sure I'll be able to find somebody who wants to add them to their collection because the vintage inspired stuff can be really nice to, to work into your holiday collections. Let me get what fell to the floor. Oh yeah, this is another, again, the kitsch continues. Um, and uh, in this bag, there was a broken piece to begin with, um, but there was something that I really, really wanted. And it was this little, almost Majelica like Japan toad. I think it's super, super cool. Really nice. And typically what I do, if what is broken is vintage, I will keep it. And periodically I will sell a box of, of little ceramics that are broken for people who like to do crafting with them. And there was another little frog in that, um, in that uh, set. And usually I will keep the piece if the broken piece is in there, but that must have been broken before they put it in the bag. Okay, here's another cool thing. Talking about stepping outside what I, I kind of know about. Um, I found a whole bag of little metal treasures, little tiny things that I know people love to put on their little shelves. So there was this little watering can in there. Um, there was a bigger watering can in there. And again, these are things that the garden guy likes. Um, then there was this uh, teapot with a little lid on it and the lid comes off. I thought that was super cute. But you know, if I'm gonna be honest, this is what I really got it for. There's this little set of uh, sort of like cocktail swords. Two of them are missing, but I thought they were super cool. So I didn't wanna leave them behind. Uh, they have them taped on, that's why uh, you see the tape there. But I thought that was really neat. Um, and I think someone will really like to add that to their collection. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more bag and then I'm gonna take a break because when the videos get too long, they take too long to upload. So let me do one more bag. Um, and I can't remember 
I need to see why I got this bag. Um, so there are three items in it. Uh, the first one is, oh yeah, so this first one is a Taiwan Russ uh, little bunny holding a baby bunny, which I thought, I'm gonna store this away for Easter next year. I'm sure someone will love that. These are typically from the 1980s. That's super cute. Um, and then I just found this bisque bunny. Again, probably I'll put this in with a larger grouping of things when I sell it. And then this is a contemporary piece. This is something that will likely get redonated. Just two little bunnies with their heads sticking out of um, a flower pot. And I can see that it was made in 2009. Yeah, so that's a cute thing. I'll set that off to the side. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. It's not gonna be quick for you, I'll be right back. But I'm gonna take a quick break to let the video um, uh, take a rest and then I will be back with some more bags. The, ba the box is still full. This is gonna be a long video. Okay, and just like that, I am back. It was actually about 10 minutes for me. I needed to let my voice rest a little bit, uh, have some ice water um, because for some reason, ice water seems to help my throat. I don't know why that is. I hear that warm things are supposed to help, but I typically don't like warm or hot beverages. So anyway, all right, so let's continue. As I said, it's right before Easter. So I did buy quite a few things in bags that were for Easter. And I was super excited to find this beautiful, um, this beautiful um, Burleyware uh, English egg. Um, it's super pretty because of the pansies on it. It's in great condition. Um, and the hand painting is super all around. But what's really nice about this one is there's a little surprise on the inside. How nice is that? Um, so this might be something I choose for tomorrow's sale. Um, it's not necessarily just Easter, it's spring, um, but the pansies are great and I know people are planting them right now. So that might be a fun thing to bring. But as I said, Easter is right around the corner. So this is probably the first set of salt and pepper shakers I'm showing you. I found some 1980 Otagiri um, uh, uh, kitty salt and pepper shakers uh, and they're kind of like in their proper formal attire. I think they're super cute. Um, and people love their kittens, so uh, I think those will do well for me. Um, I also found another set of salt and pepper shakers. I found one of those salty and peppies, the, the, um, the uh, wooden ones, but these are cats. How great are these? Um, so yeah, it's called salty and peppy. They're, it's on there. Um, and a lot of times these are, they, they, they look like a chef, but these are cat faces, which I think are super, super fun. Um, and again, in the Easter theme, what is this? This is a 1986 Andrea by Sadik, another ceramic company from the 1980s. Really realistic uh, brown hair, uh, which if you're familiar with the movie Watership Down, this reminded me of it. Um, and so that's why I got it. Cause again, the little nostalgia for that, for that movie when I was a child. Um, I also found uh, another Goebel 1984 bunny, super, super cute. It is a Goebel in great condition. And then I was lucky enough, I, I've been lucky with these lately. If you're familiar with the Lefton uh, Easter animal series, there are bunnies, chicks, ducks, and lambs. I found three of the white rabbits um, and they come in three different poses and a lot of times they get broken. All three of these, I believe, are in good condition. So I found two that are in this pose and then one that is sort of in a crouched pose. Uh, and these same bunnies also come in brown, um, but they're really fun. I have two of each of those animals in my collection. So when I find them, I love to share them with people. I also found this, which I think is an older, maybe an early California piece. I'll need to look at it a little bit more closely, but it is a white rabbit with some pink eyes. I thought that was super pretty too. What else did I find that was Easter related before I move on? Oh, let me open this bag. So these are um, Pendlefin, uh, and they are named Toddy and Jingle. They are English pottery, and they are little bunnies. Uh, this one, uh, this little lady is crying. I don't know why, but she's really cute. And this little guy it has a bell, and he's holding up his, his drawers. But they do have their Pendlefin um, artist uh, palette tags on the bottom. And I'm trying to see if there's a date. I don't see a date, but if I remember correctly, these were late 1970s. I'll look it up though. But those are really neat. 
Oh, here's another thing I might bring to the sale tomorrow um, because it kind of fits the color scheme. I found some, um, and I do believe these are older because I, I'm familiar with Polish pottery. I've been to some Polish potters before in Poland. Um, and the mark on this, ju these just look older to me. Um, but this is classic Polish pottery, two little egg cups. But the mark on the inside is not reflective of the marks that I've seen in, in more contemporary pottery. I mean, it was just there, was it last year? Um, so I think these are a bit older, but nonetheless, they're really, really cool. And egg cups, it's the right time of the year for egg cups. So I, I might bring those to the sale tomorrow. Here's another thing that typically, believe it or not, I pass on. Um, and this one is actually damaged. So this one will probably get redonated or it'll go into my, um, it'll go into my collection of uh, broken things. But, um, when it, I love Joseph's Originals ceramics, but the little birthday girls with the numbers, I just have a real hard time with. Can't find people who want them. And I found this little birthday angel for the year two, uh, for the second birthday, but her wing was broken. Um, but the wing is here, so it could be repaired. So I'll put her in that same box that I put the other damaged piece in. But the reason I bought it was because there was another Joseph's piece in it. And it was the April birthday girl, the um, birthstone girl. And again, I typically don't buy these unless of course I get them for a dollar or two because I have so many of them. But when I find them with their sticker on it, um, that's even better because it tells you what month it represents. And a lot of people remove those stickers and they can be really hard to figure out what months they are. So when I find one that has a month on it, I buy it and take a picture of it. So now I'll know that that's the April one in the future. Um, I also found some glass. Let me just grab a couple of bags that have glass in it so I can just show you a little variety. Um, I found some cool milk glass and a year ago I would have passed on these even though they were only uh, 75 cents each, these little milk glass shakers. But what I've noticed recently is a lot of people are wanting these, they're using them to make little wire flower arrangements. So they get some florist wire, they put them in the little holes and they put a, a flower enamel pin or they make a flower out of buttons and they use these as the little vases. I know a couple of ladies in the area who do it. So I pick them up when I can, um, just so I can pass those along to people. Um, and, and again, the milk glass uh, vessels, uh, I have to think very, carefully about whether or not I'm gonna get them. Um, but I did get this little child's um, sized creamer and sugar because again, I have noticed recently people liking to put child sets of vintage glass together. Um, I don't know for either a display collection or to gift to a child, but um, these are in that old quilt pattern, uh, probably Westmoreland, um, but I'll do a little bit more research to find out. Um, and I also found some Moon and Star which is always nice when you find them for 50 cents a piece. I found this little little guy, little votive holder, I think, um, or maybe it's a salt, I'm not sure, I'll look it up, but in that beautiful emerald, uh, colonial green actually, but it's an emerald green to me. And then I found a toothpick holder. Again, they were 50 cents each, you can't say no to that. And another thing that two years ago I wouldn't have bought because actually I have a ton from my grandmother's collection, but I do have found people wanting them are the Fenton shoes, especially the Daisy and Button. Really, really pretty. So I found a colonial green and a colonial blue. Really, really pretty. In good condition, really good condition. All right, let's grab a couple more. So I don't know what these are. I don't know what they are, but I wanted to take a chance on them. Maybe other people know what they are. They're flocked. They're little pink flocked things. Whether or not these are old or not, or they're part of a newer set of things that children play with today, but there are these little kitties. Um, there's this cute little parrot, or sort of bird. Um, and the flocking is super soft. And then probably what I think is another kitty. And they have hearts in their eyes. That's making me think they are more contemporary, but I'll look them up and see what they're all about and then I'll figure out what to do with them. Um, but again, when you, you're paying just cents for something, sometimes it's worth, it's worth taking a chance on. Um, what else? So this is interesting. Again, something I don't know anything about. I might bring this to tomorrow's sale if I can do some research on it. Um, but I thought it looked cool. Uh, and again, I don't know metals really well, so I am trying to learn them but I found this key with this cameo in it. 
And at first I thought maybe this was just something that was recently made and maybe it was, but the, the back does look old and it does have this, what looks to be like an older tag saying 24 karat gold plated. Now I, I know that doesn't mean it's super valuable, but it is pretty cool uh, for someone who decorates in this sort of style, just a key with a cameo in it. So I thought that was pretty neat and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to learn more about that. Maybe there's nothing to learn about it, I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so what else is interesting to look at? Oh, so many things in here. Another thing I buy when I see them are old glass stoppers um, because you never know when you're gonna find, I have a little box of these in my inventory. You never know when you're gonna find a bottle that needs a stopper and you might have one that fits, especially when they're one of these ones that are sanded. This is a really pretty clear glass stopper. Um, so I, I like to pick those up when they're affordable. Oh, another thing I really like to pick up because they are super popular. I've found a bunch of people wanting them, um, especially on the Instagram sales. I found a couple, and these are larger than the ones I typically find. I found a couple Royal Worcestershire um, uh, egg coddlers. Uh, this one with the berry pattern on it, which I think is really pretty. And then this one with a gorgeous, really gorgeous uh, sort of flower and butterfly pattern on it. Um, these are these are really great, and I know people still people still use these, so um, those were fun to find. So it's been 25 minutes of me going through the box, and I'm not even halfway done. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to stop here and start a new video, just so that it doesn't get too long. Uh, I know people get really bored with the long videos, so. Um, uh, I'll give people a, a couple day rest in between the unboxing, but that's what I found uh, in this first segment. Um, and I'm gonna end it here. Uh, I know that was a rather abrupt ending, but I, I can see that I'm at 12 minutes again for this section of the video. And when you get past 12 minutes, the upload time uh, for YouTube gets really, really long. So I wanna try to avoid that. Um, so with that, thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm Garden Guy Bill. I make videos. Um, Sometimes they're gardening, sometimes they're vintage, sometimes it's unboxing, sometimes it's in the antique store. Who knows where the next few months will take me as long as I continue to have a voice. Um, and uh, thank you all for hanging out with me today. Thank you for subscribing if you are a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free for you. It really helps us content creators out, um, gets our videos out to more people. Um, leave me a comment or a thumbs up or a heart or sign up for notifications. Any of those things are helpful. But even if you don't do any of that, just thanks for hanging out. Um, I love doing this and I love that people love coming along for the journey. So I'm going to get all of this stuff boxed back up again and I'll make another video in just a few minutes, but you won't see it for a few days. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.